Welcome to Watching the Horizon. I'm Jake. There's a lot of tension in our world today. Just uh, watch the news or check out the latest internet feed and, and you'll see it there. Kind of doesn't matter where in the world you are. Um, people starving to death, literally, in countries across the world that have never really experienced this kind of famine before. Uh, political issues uh, in countries that have never really experienced those kinds of political issues before. In our own country, here in the U.S., uh, don't really have to go too far there. Um, it it kind of feels like the whole world is preparing for some sort of fallout, for some sort of war. I see the fragmentation and segmentation of our society and I'm not saying that the causes themselves don't have merit. Things like equal rights, um, personal liberty, where you stand on, you know, black versus white, riches versus poor, uh, you know, transgender, you know, versus not. That's not what this channel's about. But I would like to bring a little bit more attention to the individual segmentation that is occurring. And even the groups themselves are, are, are fracturing even further. And I can't help but think that this is going to be something that is going to have some repercussions. A subscriber sent me a uh, message the other day, and it was uh, it was an excerpt out of a journal uh, from somebody back in the 1960s. Um, I, I don't know who the person is. Uh, apparently they were some sort of religious leader, but... Um, the message itself I thought was interesting, and so what I'd like to do is share it with you now, because I can't help but feel that the message that's said here, something that was never meant to be shared publicly, like I said it was uh, part of a journal entry, um, but it is, it's so on point. I'm going to go ahead and read this for you now. When the people commence to look to the federal government for their support, and if they don't receive what they feel they are entitled to, they will strike against the power which is withholding that to which they consider themselves entitled. Just as in times past men have struck against the companies who gave them jobs and provided them with a livelihood, then they felt they were entitled to higher wages and shorter hours. In both cases, the recipients are not grateful for what they are receiving. They are angry because it isn't more. The difference lies in this. When the strike is against a private company, there is an independent, unbiased police force to maintain peace and arbitrate the case in court. But when the government is one of the parties to the dispute, there is no appeal to anything except force. The employees can come to hate the government and its officers just as they come to hate the company and its officers when the law is not based upon moral principle when the law can no longer appeal to either reason or justice, and where it is nothing more than a power which states that it is available and dispenses it with an arbitrary hand, with no fundamental principle to guide it in saying how much is to be given to which group, people lose respect for such a law and the police power which enforces it. No appeal to justice, reason, or compassion will prove effective. The people who are the backbone of civilized nations the thrifty, hard-working, self-respecting, independent, honest class cannot respect such a law. Where the right of private property is protected, man is encouraged to look to himself to supply his wants. He is even forced to do this, just as nature's and nature's God decreed. Thou shalt eat by the sweat of thy own face. But when government announces that it will now see to it that his wants are supplied, he no longer feels that he may rely upon his own brains and body. That man loses respect for the rights of others. He looks to the use of force to provide for his needs. He looks to force which takes from others 
that they have created, and the more he is pampered, the more he demands. He comes to believe that the government tells him that there is no property rights which may not be invaded to provide for his wants. He no longer regards it as necessary to conserve and limit his desires or to save and provide for the future. In our complex economy, this is the worst possible attitude, for when it breaks down, the suffering will be most intense. When a government encourages and advocates the belief that force may be used by groups acting together through government to despoil others of their property, the reliance upon force becomes accepted. As the reliance upon force becomes accepted and the numbers increase who depend upon government, lagress. The greater becomes the problem of restraining this group when government can no longer supply their demands. The government must resort to force to keep them in place when their demands reach that point, which they soon will. Where it is impossible to give them what they ask, civil war will occur just as it did in Rome. There are always large numbers in any society who are industrious and thrifty and who respect the rights of others to own and control property. These people know within themselves that it is morally wrong for the government to take from them the fruits of their own labors and saving practices and give to those who won't work and won't save. As the immoral practice of government grows, disrespect for law also grows. They no longer can be counted on to uphold and obey the law they know is immoral and is at variance with their conscience. The foundation of any stable government is respect and voluntary obedience by the masses of the people. When this is destroyed, free government is no longer possible and dictatorship becomes the only answer. Such a form of government must resort to a policy of foreign war to keep the people united in any respect. They must conduct a war against some real or imagined foreign government and cry danger in order to get any support. In such a government, only the corrupt will accept positions of responsibility, or those who are so blind that they are unable to see the perversion of government. Such a group will not scruple to stay in power. The love of power becomes the dominant aim in their lives. No means is too devious or too reprehensible. They will use force, lies, bribery, murder, and imprisonment to hold their opponents in check. The loss of political and economic freedom is an inevitable consequence of socialism. Self-government becomes impossible because centralized planning displaces all local planning. As immorality grows apace, the people are unable to act in concert in sufficient numbers to put respectable and moral men in office. Each group is striving to protect its own selfish and government-protected interests. Any man who stands up and says, this is all wrong, is vilified, maligned, and is literally torn to pieces by the mobs who want government to continue to protect their labor monopoly business monopoly, subsidy, welfare check, etc. The moral element seeing that it is impossible to restore government to its proper function begins to plot its violent overthrow. This is the only recourse they have. Appeal to the ballot box is futile. Death is preferable to slavery to them. If there is no moral reference points, then government becomes nothing more than an instrument of force which treats man as if he were just another beast of burden. Not only does the government presume to own and control all land and natural resources, but it arrogates unto itself the power to treat each citizen's labor as its own, to dispose of as it pleases, and even to direct what labor shall be performed. 1962, Mr. Arthur Anderson. Now, I'm not saying anything about this country's current or previous administrations. I think you could probably read a lot into that no matter what. Remember, this was written in 1962. A lot's happened since then. But man, how much of that is just so on point for today? These are just the thoughts of one man, but I couldn't help but feel that 
there is such a sense of hopelessness here. There's such a sense of forewarning that if we continue down this path, that there is no other recourse, that it will be the moral individuals of this country that will feel as though they have no other choice other than to plot. Now, I love this country, and there's nowhere else that I'd rather be, but I certainly feel a lot of the angst and anxiety that was written here, regardless of what you believe or how this is all going to shake out. Being personally responsible for yourself and your family is more important now than it ever has been before. Please, prepare yourselves. Food, water, shelter, do whatever you can. Put these things away. You're going to sleep better at night. You're not going to worry so much about the news. And if violence does occur in this great country of ours, then we'll be able to take action. Take action to protect our ideals, to protect what we know to be true and good and honest. Thanks for watching. Keep your eyes open.